Where are the candy lovers in the place? Where are the candy? Just wave your hand. Oh, you, you know you love it. You know. This is National Candy Month. June is National Candy Month, so that means you can eat all you want, and there will be no calories, there's no shame, there's nothing like that. In fact, on, on the count of three, I want everyone to shout out the name of your favorite candy bar, all right? I don't know if it's going to be that chocolate, if it's going to be the caramel, okay, right? on the count of three, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Mine too. That's my favorite too. I may imagine that. Uh, Reese's is top of my list. I think you know that. But other than that, uh, everything else runs a really close second. Trust me. Uh, candy. Man, we love our candy. The chocolate and the peanuts and the nougat. I'm not even sure what nougat is, but I love it anyway. I mean, it's just, it's just like so, so good. Uh, the sweets. We, we, we get a sweet tooth and, and that's fun and you got to hit it. Uh, but, but this series is really not just about the candy. We're talking about dulce, which is sweetness or that candy. It's, it's the sweet life Jesus died to give us. That, that, that's our focus, really. It's, we're, we're playing with that. But, but Jesus did not come to give you a sour life. He came to give you a sweet life. And now you can't really tell that by some people who say they're serving him. Never mind, I won't, I won't go there. I'm just, I'm just saying, there, there is, it's sweet to serve Jesus because serving Jesus comes with a benefit package. Aren't you, when, when, you, when, you go, when you get a job, when you go, go apply for a job, it's great to get a job. Thank God that you, you, you're gamefully employed. Uh, but, but man, when you get a job that has a benefit package to it, that's a whole nother level right there. I mean, I don't just get a paycheck, but I get my teeth worked on for free. Hey, well, at least I, it's got a discount. I, I got a 401K. Don't know what the K is all about, but I got a 401, and that means I'm going to be saving some money for my future. I, if there's nothing like knowing you got insurance, I got paid medical leave, I mean, paid, paid leave, vacation. When you get a package, it's great to get a package with the salary. It's benefits. Jesus, serving Jesus, comes with a benefit package. It's, in fact, let me put it this way. There's more to serving Jesus than you can see on face value. There's more to him than just the benefit of going to heaven. I'm glad I got eternal. Eternally, I'm safe. It's going to be good because y'all understand what the opposite is, right? There's an alternative to eternal heaven. There's also an eternal damnation. Yo, that's real. That's not cartoons. That's not old school. That's real. That's Bible, all right? That's Bible. I, I'm glad that when I gave my life to Jesus, bam, I'm going to heaven. But I'm so glad I don't have to wait till eternity before I get a benefit from serving him. And that's what we need to lean into and be reminded that there are benefits there is extra because you're serving Jesus, and we get that in this world that you don't get if you're not serving him. This is what the Bible says. The book of Psalm chapter uh, 34, Psalm 34, verses 7 through 10. Check this out. The angel of the Lord stays close around those who fear him, and he takes them out of trouble. Is anybody enjoying your Bible reading today yet? Are you kidding me? He says, if you fear God, not, not, not afraid of God, I respect him, I honor him with my life. If I lean into him that way, the Bible says that he will take us out of trouble. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm -mm, good. Some of y'all were not raised on Campbell's soup, were you? Taste and see that the Lord is good. In other words, living for Jesus is sweet. Everyone say sweet. Yeah, yeah. It, there, there's, the, living for him is right. Take, watch this. There are people that are looking at him and they haven't tasted of him, of the, of, of the salvation, of the joy, of the hope that he can give. They look on the outside and go, oh, that's nice. And they will think that serving Jesus is just another option on the table when they don't realize nothing will do you like Jesus. Taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the man or the woman who trusts in him. Look at this. Fear the Lord, all you who belong to him. For those who fear him never want for anything. You get the hookup. If I'm serving with my life, I get the hookup. If I honor God, if I'm God conscious, I get the hookup because I'm plugged into him. He's plugged into me. I've got it. So watch this. Verse 10. The young lions suffer want and hunger. David is saying, when we look at people, we think they're strong, they're young, they're bold. They've got the rule and the run. They've got the authority in the place. Those folks who are doing it in their own strength, they come up short. They're hungry. They're without. They don't have it like you think they do. 
but they who look for the Lord will not be without any good thing. In other words, we can't chase life based on what it looks on the outside. There's a whole new way of living, and living for Jesus is the sweet life because it comes with a benefit package. If you're a believer in Jesus, if you've given your life to him, this is really, really good news. And if you have not done so yet, this is good news for you because he's available to you. And I'll talk to you about that at the end of the service today. Because Jesus is not just our savior, he's our keeper. He's the one that walks with us. He doesn't just, his goal is not just to get you to heaven. His goal is to give you some heaven right here on earth. And he's a good God. Somebody shout he's a good God. He's a good God. That's why Romans chapter 2 says this. It's the kindness of God that draws us. It's not our fear that he's going to strike us with a lightning bolt. I, I, I've been around people who act like, who, who talk like God's out to get them. How many know if God wanted to get you, he'd have got you? No, we live in the lightning capital of the world. If God wanted to get you, he'd have got you. If you've ever driven on Florida Avenue, if he wanted to get you, he could have got you. I mean, we live in central Florida, you understand? No, God's not out to get you. He's out to love you, to know you, to bless you, to lean into your life. There's another level of relationship you can have with them than where you are right now. It's better than you ever imagined. But sometimes, even in all of God's goodness, we still question if he's there, if he cares. You ever been there? Everyone please nod your head yes, because uh, me too, me too. I mean, God can like, I'm so excited. I love Jesus. Nothing, no, nothing can change your love. We sing it on Sunday, and by Tuesday, where are you? Where are you? I need you now. It's amazing how quickly we can change our mind about God. And if we're not cursing him, sometimes we're just questioning him. Do you care? Do you know where I am? Are you listening? Hello, 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 hello. We, 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 it's like there's, there's just this, this vacuum in my life. We, we do this. It's in who we are because we go through job loss. We, we, we go through disappointment. We've been dropped. Uh, we go through pressure. There's pain that hits our life. And we begin to wonder when those times come, do I need to try something different? I, I, I went through that when we were in the process of trying to buy this facility. We were trying to buy this building. You know, we were in the Lake. Y'all remember the Lakeland Center? Now the RP Funding Center, the lay was the Lakeland Center is what it was. And as far as I was concerned, it was Free Life Chapel. That some called the Lakeland Center, but it was Free Life Chapel, daggone it. Four years and ten months. Every Sunday morning, 5.30 a.m., back that truck up. Unload those screens. Unload those lights. Unload that camera. Unload that sound equipment. <sighs> and the, from day number one, when we got in there, is the first Sunday I started looking to get out of there. God, you got to find us a place. God, where can we move the church to? We, this is not your will. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Load in, load in, load out. No, set up, tear down. No, Jesus. And for ten months, uh, four years and ten months, man, we're just we're working. We got in, but we're looking to get out. What are we doing? We're, we're grateful for it, but man, we wanted to get a home. And we looked at twenty-four locations. I walked twenty-four buildings. I'm talking to real estate guys. I'm talking to the owners. I'm talking, looking at facilities. I got architects coming in, looking at different places. What can we do? Can we modify this? Uh, and twenty-four. Whatever, whether it was Verno shutting me down, Mino saying it's not going to work, whatever, 24 times, no, 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 I'm going to, where are you, where are you, where are you, where are you? It was rough. That was then. Then I felt discouraged and, 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 and challenged and, and, and rejected. Now, when I got opportunity number 25, hi. When number 25 hit, and I see what he had saved for us, I'm so grateful for all the former rejection that I went through. Come on. Excuse me just a minute while I just hit you. I'm so grateful. I didn't know he had 22 acres and a 400 school and a church with it, and we're about to blow. I didn't know he had all that. Are you kidding me? Look what, here's what I'm telling you. When the rejection hits your life, you gotta learn to bounce with it. You gotta bounce with it. You just gotta get, you gotta, don't let it shut you down when it gets you, because as a believer, you never get rejected. You just get redirected. That's all just happened right there. As long as you don't quit, it's gonna work out. It's gonna be just right. It's gonna be all right. Ooh, that's my God. It's a benefit package. That's how he rolls. I know what it is to go through those times. And we question. It's natural. Today I want to talk to you in general, though, about 
just God's supernatural provision for our life. Because he is a provider. Everything you're looking at right now, God has provided. It's not a product of Scott and Cindy or a staff. This is a product of Jesus. Jesus did this. Jesus got that screen right there that I've been praying for. Jesus put these walls up. Jesus did this. Exodus chapter 16, verse 4, one of the most powerful stories of the provision of God. I love this. Exodus 16, verse 4. The Lord said to Moses, Big Mo, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day, look, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. Uh, This is a story where, let me give you a little bit of a, a, a background. Israel is in Egypt in bondage 400 years. Not good. Uh -uh. God comes and he breaks the bondage off and they get to leave. That was as we celebrate Passover. They killed the lamb, put the blood on the doorpost. Death angel came through, began to kill the firstborn. And the Egyptians said, please get out of here. Your God is mightier than our gods. Get out. And the Israelites, they left. And they went from Egypt to spending 40 years in the wilderness. And then they went into their promised land. Watch this. Leaving Egypt was one night. Stepping into the promise was one day. The wilderness was 40 years. The process of getting there is always longer than getting in. It's the journey, and that is where we struggle. I love what God said, and I love when I get in it. It's just the wilderness that is tough to hold on and keep believing in that season right there. That's where we struggle the most because that's where we have to learn to trust God. That's our struggle right there. You know, it's, it's interesting when you, when you get into this because uh, the Bible says that, that, that when they left Egypt, this is so funny, they left Egypt, the Egyptians were so glad that they were leaving because the God of the Israelites was so mighty and everything, the plagues were going on, it was crazy. Please go. That the Bible says that the Egyptians were giving them the rings off their fingers. They were giving them their brand new four-wheelers. They just bought at Bass Pro. You can please take it. Just please go there. They, they were giving them like their, their stuff. Here, here, here's my Louis Vuitton shoes, you know, the red bottom shoe. Here, they're, they're just loading them. They're giving them gold. And, and so they're walking. Out. The, the ladies are wearing rings on every finger, every toe. They're walking like that. They're, they're trying like, we, are, we got stuff everywhere. What do you do with it? They're loaded down with all these riches, and they're going to the wilderness, and there's not a mall in sight. In fact, the Bible is very specific to tell us that 45 days after they left Egypt, they ran out of food. Ruh-roh. <laughs> they forgot to do that. They forgot to bring the food. They got all the wealth, but they forgot the food. 45 days, roughly 2 million people in the wilderness. Anybody got any bread? Gone. And they found themselves in a situation where all of their Egyptian wealth could do nothing for them in their spiritual desert. Let me help you with something today. You can gain everything that Egypt has to give you. Social media followers, fame, money, accolades, name recognition, face recognition. You can have it all. But when hell hits your life, You can't spend any of it to get it through. It's going to take Jesus to get you through this situation in your life. You better hear me. I love edumacation, but even your degrees won't get you through that situation. Get get two homes, own three homes, get it all, that's fine. But your second or third home will not get you through. I'm starving to death because I don't have the capacity to provide for my own needs when I hit this. What impresses Egypt does not impress the desert. And it takes a whole different economy, a whole different resource to get you through this season in life. And you're going to have to know God. And that's why God said, I'm going to bring you to this place. So now you're going to learn to trust me. You're going to learn to depend on me every 
every day of the week, realizing that at the end of the day, I brought you out of it, but you still need me. It's not over. Just because you're out of that situation doesn't mean you're free of me. Ah, just because the, 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 the addiction is over doesn't mean you're over with Jesus. Just, just because the marriage is now together doesn't mean you're done with Jesus. No, you still need him today in your life because only he can provide in your life. Listen, Exodus 16, verse 15, a few verses down, listen to this. So the Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. God is now providing. He says, I'm going to rain down bread from heaven for you. I'm going to feed you. You ran out of food. You need me. And so now all of a sudden, bam, watch this. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is it? They asked each other. They had no idea what it was that had come down from heaven. Moses told them, it is the food the Lord has given you to eat. What's interesting is we know that this is usually called manna. Everyone say manna. We know that, but manna is not what you think it is. No. Nope. Manna in the Hebrew literally means, what is it? We've turned manna into a noun, but manna was a phrase that was a question. It really means, what is it? They're looking at each other going, what is it? I don't know. It's Wonder Bread. I wonder what it is. And he said it bread. I don't know. He just, what is it? Anybody have that drawer at your house that it catches everything that you don't know where that screw goes to or that, that screwdriver or that wire? And, and like you pull stuff, you pull it open and some stuff crawls out of it. And you kind of shut it real fast. Like uh, it's, I, I opened ours the other day. We got a daggone a sprinkler. Uh, the, the, the nozzle that goes into a ho an outdoor hose is like, what is that doing inside this? It's in the kitchen. It's, it's got all kinds of stuff in that drawer. It's kind of crazy, right? Uh, and, and when you, have you ever pulled something out and go, what does this go to? Because here's what's interesting. Everything in that drawer goes to something else. Have you ever decided, I'm emptying this drawer and threw things away, only to realize two weeks later, oh, that's what that went to. Now you're Googling trying to buy another one of those things that you don't know what it is because the value of those things only come alive when you realize what it's connected to. Alone, there's no value. It's valued only when you know what it belongs to. Your life will disconnect and you will think there's no purpose and use and you'll throw your destiny and your life away until you realize you're connected to something bigger than what you are. You'll let anybody just shove you in a drawer and push you away when the truth is God's got a plan that is crazy, amazing for your life. I'm connected to something bigger and I've got to live my life for more than just me. It's more than for my name. It's more than just making money. It's more than a career. It's not about me. It's about knowing. God, knowing Jesus and him crucified, that he can come alive in me and me and him. That's what living is all about. Manna. In other words, it just kind of, they hit a situation. They didn't know what it was. And maybe like you in our house, we don't know what it is. It just, you just call it a, it's a whatchamacallit. It's just a whatchamacallit. That's Hebrew in Polk County for manna. That's just a whatchamacallit, that thing right there. It's a flugel nut, it goes over the wobble pen. That's what it's a whatchamacallit. That's a, it, it's just a whatchamacallit when you don't know what it is. We're going to hit some places in life and you don't know what it is or if God is involved. And here's my challenge for you today in your marriage when things get a little cray cray and it's kind of going sideways and you all are discussing it, you can't figure out what's going on, but you know God is good all the time. I can't see him operating, but I know he's in it. You may as well just go, I don't have a clue what's going on. It must be a heavenly whatchamacallit. That's all this thing is right now. God's got to be involved. It's just manna. What is it? I don't know, but it's from heaven. It's from God. God is going to provide and meet the needs in your life. You see, God is providing in, for you in ways you never expected. God is so involved in your life right now. Do you really think, do you really think you got where you are right now without God's divine involvement in your life? 
Think about what you've survived. Think about what you've been through. Think about who you've been through. Think about what tried to take you out. And look where you are right now. Warriors, survivors, you're still breathing. You still have hope and joy. We're living in a nation today where they've lost all hope. Just this week, we've had seen Hollywood, people who are the, the people that everybody in the world wanted to be just like, and they're taking their own lives. It's over. I'm done. Because without Jesus, there is no hope. And if you hit a wilderness and you don't have manna falling because God is your source, you'll find that everything Egypt gave me, it is a waste of time. It produces nothing nothing in my life. It's not going to help my marriage. It's not helping my money. But as long as Jesus is involved, then everything is going to be all right. I've got a hope. I'm going to make it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Serving Jesus is not a cute religious thing. It is a matter of life and death. Leaning into him and knowing him and him knowing me. There's three things I want to talk to you about, about this, whatchamacallit, this manna today. And number one is this. He gives it because it's just, he gives uncommon provision in our life. It's uncommon. It, there's no way to describe how I got this. He, he just did it. Somebody shout, he just did it. Yes. Kind of like Elijah. Throughout the Bible, we have so many references. Elijah, the Bible says that he walked up to King Ahab. King Ahab was a wicked king in Israel. And Elijah was a prophet of God. God spoke to Elijah, and he went to King Ahab, and he said, King, there won't be any rain in Israel until I say so. That's boss right there. That's boss, right? The Bible says for three years, no rain. The problem is, Elijah was also living in the province where King Ahab was, and so what he prophesied came on him as well. So now he's dealing with no rain. And the Bible says Elijah is at a brook called Cherith, and he's, the brook was, it was, a, it, was a, it was a river, went down to a creek, to a dribble. It's drying up on him. And the Bible says that ravens fed Elijah. When there was no food anywhere, birds began to come in and give food to Elijah. He's just sitting back in his lazy boy, and they just drop him down, thank you. And he just, and, and, and now here's what's crazy. Ravens are scavengers. Ravens don't give their food away. Ravens fight each other for each other's food. In other words, God's word is saying this, I'll even cause stingy people to bless your life. I'll, I'll, I'll cause things and people to go against their own nature just to provide for you. When you do what I ask you to do, you speak truth and you stand in my word. I'll make nature change its whole course just to make sure that you and your house are provided for. I got you. I'm taking care of this situation. Well, what, 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 about, what about Jonah? What about Jonah? The guy who caught the biggest fish or who was caught by the biggest fish. He, he's, he's running for, he's got rebellion against God. He refused to go preach at a place named Nineveh because he didn't want anybody to actually believe in God. I mean, you talk about a selfish, rebellious preacher. No, if I go preach, they might accept God. I don't like them that way, so I don't want them to. And so he's on a boat and the storm kicks in. The people realize he's the one. God's causing the storm because of him. They threw Jonah overboard. Jonah hits the water. He goes in and God prepared, the Bible says, a big fish, a whale, and he swallowed follows Jonah up while he's in the bottom of this. Do you believe that, Scott? Yes, I believe it. It's in my Bible. And a fish swallowed him up. And for three days, he's in the, in the belly of a fish. How do you know that if you get swallowed by a fish and you're still alive and you've been running from God, it might change your mind? He gets his head right. The fish vomits him up on the land. Jonah goes, I think I'll go to Nineveh, to Nineveh, to Nineveh. And he changed his mind. God knows how even in our rebellion to provide protection to get us through times, to get us to the right place. Oh, my goodness. What about the story of Esther? What about Esther? Esther, the queen, here she is, and she's marrying the king, and they made a movie of this. And, and here, but they were killing all the Jews. Esther is a Jew. Haman builds, builds gallows because they're going to hang all the Jews. Esther steps up, and she goes to bat. And Haman, the man who built the gallows to hang all the Jews, he was the one that hung on the gallows that he built to hang all the Jews. It was a divine reversal. I hear it, 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 it's amazing when you look at these stories because in the book, of Esther, God's name is never mentioned one time. God can be silent and active at the same time. Just because I don't see him, don't mean he ain't doing nothing up inside this world. You, you need to look at some people that are hating on you and say, you better be careful. 
God's working in my life right now. You better be careful. You better be careful. Because the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that comes against you in judgment, it shall be condemned. That's what God's opinion is about your life. Somebody shout, God's my provider. He's my provider. Yes, he is. God's got you. I am. I'm going to go to another. So the Bible says, <laughs> you better, oh, shucks. You, you, you better. Somebody shout, that's my God. He's taking care of your house. He's taking care of your life. He's taking care of your mind. He's got your body. He's not surprised about stuff you just found out about it. He's known about it, and he's already working all things together for your good. Please sit down. I got to hurry. You're infringing on my time. The Bible says that there was a guy named Isaac. His father Abraham was taking him to the top of the mountain to sacrifice him to God. He gets him to the top of the mountain, and he's about to kill him. God holds his hand, stays Abraham's hand, because on the other side of the mountain, there had been another thing going on. God had a ram that was caught in the thicket by his horns. In other words, while Isaac and Abraham were going up this side of the mountain, God had the provision coming up the other side of the mountain. Just because you don't see what God is doing doesn't mean that he's got something on your mountain that's going to get you out of the situation. It looks bad right now, but keep listening. Bah. God's got your blessing tied up. It's in that passage in Genesis where God revealed him, I am Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. I know what you need when you need it. I'm better than FedEx. I know what it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight, and he never misses appointment. He always gets you. God's got this. He's a provider uncommon supernatural provision he's doing he's working on your life Bible says in Romans 15 such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us and the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promise to be fulfilled in other words all these stories and so many others that I could tell you we are to read them and realize if God did it for them he's gonna do it for me he's no respecter of persons uncommon, uncommon provision. We got to stop trying to figure God out and just start trusting him. Stop trying to find his hand, just trust his heart. Because I've never seen it yet where any teacher gives a test and they talk during the test. It's usually really silent while the test is going on. God said, I'm going to put you through this intentionally. It's a course in your growth in me. I want to teach you to trust me, to lean on me, and to know that I'm good. Anybody got kids? All right, hands down. Have you ever just looked at your kids and said, baby, you're just going to have to trust me? Well, I don't understand, and you're too young to understand. Just trust me. Trust me. But I want to go to the party. Trust me. You're not going to the party. I know a little bit more. His, halt, his thoughts higher than your thoughts. His ways higher than your ways. I love my son dearly, but from the love of a heart of a father, I also discipline my son severely. Discipline and love out of the same house. God knows what he's doing. Just because it's painful doesn't mean it's not loving. God wants your best, not your comfort. He's leading you somewhere in life. He's got to get you out of this wilderness and get you down the road, but it's going to take trust. And that's what he's building in our life. Number two quickly is there's just daily provision somebody shout daily. daily the Bible says that the manna came every day he didn't give enough for a week's supply he gave enough for one day uh oh what's that it's a whatchamacallit go pick enough up for today and they bagged enough up they got it in jars and they took it in and they ate for that day if they tried to take enough for today and tomorrow they gathered more than they needed the Bible says that it rotted it wouldn't last it was only one day maybe that's why Jesus said when they asked him how should we pray Give us this day our daily bread. In other words, there's enough provision to get you through today, but not enough to get you through tomorrow. You're going to have to come back and gather again. Can I help you with something? If you think I can give you enough on Sunday to get you through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're, you've, you've mistaken. 
You're going to need something else by Monday, I promise you, and something else by Tuesday, I promise you. Because what happens, what happens, I've learned this, I know this by experience. You can, you, can, you can hold off, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to eat them because I can't find anything good to eat. I'm just going to, I'm eating healthy, I'm eating nutritious, I need a grilled chicken breast. And you can go all day long. The other day, I went, I went until 3 o'clock because I couldn't find anything good to eat. I was traveling, and all of a sudden, I went into a Bass Pro to buy some things before I head to Canada. And while I was in Bass Pro, I got the headache coming on. I hadn't eaten anything all day. I'm starving. And I bought a bag of chocolate-covered pretzels and ate the whole daggone bag. Because if you get hungry enough, you'll binge on anything. And if we don't decide a daily diet of God, it's amazing what you'll eat during the week. And we don't need to have erratic spiritual diets where we're on this and then back on Jesus and on this and back on. There's a consistency. God has a daily diet, a plan for your life and my life to lean into him, to know him. That's why we create community around here, life groups, growth track, serving in the church, relationships in and out of the church to help take us where we need to go, a regular, steady, praying, reading your Bible. Give God five minutes. A prayer life starts with five minutes. Well, I don't know how to pray. Well, let me tell you, the best way to learn how to pray is to just start. Lord, today sucketh. And I know you don't even have to pray King James. You can pray. I'm just talk to him like you would talk to a friend. Give him five. And it turns to seven minutes, super Christian. That's all good. I'm just saying, just get the ball rolling. Give him some time. It'll amaze you how your heart will open up as you begin to talk to God. Daily provision. Lamentations three. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Through his mercies, we're not consumed. Because his compassion fails not, they're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness every day. Somebody shout, every day. Every day. Every day he's on my side. Every day he did it again. Every day he provided. Yeah, man, what you might call it? Wonder bread, whatever you want to call it, God is there. He's doing something. Now, finally, and that's, this, is, this is where I'm closing. Not only does he have uncommon provision, not only does he have daily provision, he then finally... For worshipers, he has double provision. Double for your trouble. That's what Isaiah 61 says. Double for your trouble. All the hell you've been through. Double. Anybody ready for double joy? Yeah. Double favor, double wisdom, double love, double peace. Peace, peace over me. I'm trying out, Jeremy. Did I make it? Okay, maybe not. I, I just, peace. Man, I love that song, peace. It's uncommon, daily, and double. How do you get through life without that? Yeah. He says, I give double. For five days a week, manna fell every morning. Enough for one day's supply. Day number six, that's what your Bible says, day number six, double fell on day number six because day number seven was the Sabbath, a day of worship, a day of rest. Because Jesus came and died on the cross for you and me. In fact, the Bible says in the book of John, where is it, where is it, where is it? John chapter six. Jesus said, I am the manna that came down from heaven. Jesus said, I am that wonder bread. I am your whatchamacallit. I've got the sweet life for you. I, I am that. And because he died to give you the sweet life, we now live in a perpetual Sabbath. Every day for you and me is supposed to be a day of Sabbath rest. The, the Bible says, where is that verse? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. There remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. There remains. It's there. When I become God-focused, God-centered, I'm pursuing Him. You're a pursuit. I'm after you, God. When I focus my heart and my life on Him, I have entered into a lifestyle of God-consciousness, worshiping Him. And when I do that, I rearrange my Sundays. I want to be in God's house. 
I let his word redirect my decisions in my home, with my family, in my business, in culture. I'm doing what I can to honor him. I'm not doing it perfect, but man, I keep coming after him. When I'm living God conscious, he says that makes you a worshiper. And if you are qualified as a worshiper, for you, my friend, you get double. I will have double fall on day six because day seven, I don't want you to have to work or labor. He says, I've already done it. I did what you need, Sue. I took your brokenness, I gave you healing. I took your fear, I gave you peace. I took your weakness, I give you strength and joy. That's the benefit package of living the sweet life in Jesus. He died to give you all of that. Don't leave the benefits on the table. I want you to stand to your feet in this room. Come on. If you're in this room today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you've not accepted him into your heart and your life. Maybe you found that you're still trying to do life on your own and you've not said, man, Jesus, come in and take, take this heaven, take my life. I, I believe you. I trust you. I'm coming after you. I want to know you. Forgive me. I want to honor you with my life. If you've not prayed that prayer, today is the day to do that. Because your life is a living hell without Jesus. It is a living hell. He died for you to have life and life more abundant, according to his word, the sweet life. Dulce, that's what he said. And you may not understand how he's going to do it. Call it a watch him I call it. Sometimes you will see him working. That's wonderful. But regardless of whether you understand or don't, he's still involved in your life. Trust him with your life. Well, I just don't know, Scott. I'm telling you, taste and see for yourself. You know, when you go through the mall, you go through the food court. They got those little samples. They will hurt you. A little train. Would you like to try one? Two, please. Take them little cups, you throw that back. Mm, you got a special on that right there, and all of a sudden you were going a whole different direction until you tasted and you saw, oh, that's good. I was going to walk right past it until I tasted it. But now I realize I don't want anything else. I want that right there. Jesus is saying, I want you to taste and see I'm good. Take a little bit, buy in. Pray a little bit, watch me. Read my word a little bit, watch out. I'm going to come after you. You talk to me, I'm going to talk to you. Become more God conscious, I'm going to start moving in a greater way in your family. You better watch me. And until we begin to taste and see, we're still going to try to live off of what we found in Egypt. And it's not spending and we're starving. And life isn't working. But Jesus is faithful to daily feed you with uncommon provision and double if you're a worshiper. Today, I want you to bow your head in this room. If you don't know Jesus is your Savior, but you want to get it right with Him, I want us to pray a prayer. We're going to pray a simple prayer, but as you place your trust in Him, He's going to change your life. If that's you, would you throw your hand up? Scott, I need to get things right with Jesus. I, I need you to just pray. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, yeah. Anybody in the balcony? Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, man. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you, God bless you. Amen, God bless you. I see you, God bless you. Can we all just pray this together? Jesus, I trust you. I trust that you died for me. That right now, you're giving me a new life. Taking my sin away. Giving me your grace. Giving me your love. Giving me your mercy. I need you. I receive you. Thank you for receiving me. I'm yours and you're mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Just that simple, just that simple. Father, I pray for my friends today that are in this room, that are in a struggle, they're in a wilderness. God, help us to put our trust in you, become more God conscious, that we'll lean into you greater on a daily basis, that we won't get distracted or sidelined, but we'll realize that you're providing daily. When I can see you, when I don't see you, you're active in my life. You're active in my marriage. You're active in my body, in my finances, with my children. You're working some things out. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for the benefit package, for the sweet life we get in Jesus. Thank you for the double that I have right now. Help me to keep trusting you, leaning into you, that we can know and have everything you promised. Bless my friends that just received you as Lord and Savior today. God, would you wrap arms around them, squeeze them with your love, and let them encounter a reality with you that they never thought possible. We bless you for this day in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. If you receive that, put those hands together.